Right. The minority in parliament has called on the government uh, not to uh, migrate the Ghana Police Service and other security agencies from the CAP 30 scheme to the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, a state pension scheme, according to the minority, putting the security agencies on the state pension scheme, a uh, potent great uh, danger for Ghana's national security, while the Deputy Minister of Employment and Labor relations, Bright Rekubrobi had announced that cabinet had granted approval for the unification of all pension schemes under Act 766. This is to ensure that all members of the security agencies except the officers and men of the armed forces make personal, um, personal contributions to the Senate's pension scheme, but the minority insisted that this will leave men in uniform was off when they proceed on retirement. Well, this evening, we are going to talk much on this particular issue. And in the studio now is James Agaga, Member of Parliament for Bolsa North and Ranking Member Defence and Interior uh, Committee of Parliament to throw more light on their call. Good evening, and thanks for joining us this tonight here on Newsnight. It's been a while. It's a pleasure to I'm be glad here. Glad to have you. Yes. Well, talking about the um, pension scheme, why should the security agencies not uh, be under the Senate pension scheme? Yes, there are very compelling reasons why the security right. services should not be placed under the Senate pension scheme. First of all, the personnel of the security agencies we all know work under extremely harrowing um, conditions. In spite of the harrowing conditions under which mm -hmm. they work, they give off their utmost best so that you and I can go to sleep at night. And while you and I are asleep, they must be awake so that you can sleep in comfort. Secondly, if you um, realize or you want to come to the realization that the officers and men in uniform work beyond the normal eight hours um, mandatory uh, work hours that other public servants ordinarily uh, would work. And yet, what do they get in return? Virtually nothing. And so when Cap 30 was passed, or when, if you like, the migration process began, following the passage of Act 766, the government clearly was of the view that the security agencies should be retained on the Cap 30. And be so in 2009... I'm coming right. Before you continue, let me chip in this. One will argue that uh, with the uh, security professions, um, one will argue that they know the challenges that it comes with or going beyond your limit before going into it. So isn't it something that is based on individual acceptance? No, it's about uh, 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 governance. Okay. Uh, uh, good governance requires that as we move along, we pass good legislations which would continue to motivate the men and officers in uniform to give off their best. Remember that before 2008, public servants were all under Cap 30. Yes, yes. We decided to migrate all of them, except the security agencies of state. Even though a particular provision in the Pensions Act 2008, Act 766, six, 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 yeah made provision for only the armed forces to be exempted from the migration process. But government at the time thought that the legislation was not going to serve the best mm -hmm. interest of our country. So we did not implement um, Section 31, I mean, of the um, Act 766 for good reason. Like? Because of the nature of work of the security services. You understand, they are exposed to um, um, levels of risks that ordinarily you and I would not be exposed to. And the risks include even death, permanent injury, incapacitation, and the, the, the general inconvenience that they go through so that you and I can go to sleep in comfort. So government took the view position at that time, and, and I'm talking about the NDC government in 2009. 2009. Remember okay. that this legislation was passed in, in December 2008. 2008. Yes. So, and uh, uh, MPP lost, we took over power 
in 2009. But Professor Mills and John Mahama were clearly of the view that, look, it wouldn't serve any uh, useful purpose to migrate the, the security agencies other than the armed forces onto the new pension, uh, national pension scheme. So, so we allowed them to continue to be on, on, on the Cap 30 until uh, the Honorable Deputy Minister appeared before the public, so uh, the uh, public Accounts Committee and made that infamous announcement about government's uh, uh, cabinet decision, which is to the effect that the security agencies be migrated onto the uh, uh, um, SNIP pension scheme. Right, we all know that this was under your watch. Why didn't you just amend the law then leave it for any other person, uh, another president to come and take it on? Why didn't you just amend the law under your watch? We didn't implement it. Okay. We didn't implement it, notwithstanding the fact that that provision uh, uh, existed. We thought that it was unreasonable to implement it, and so we didn't implement it. Now, a new government, a government is in place and thinks that it is, at the time is ripe for the implementation of that provision. That is why we uh, thought that it was, in the circumstances, uh, reasonable to call for an amendment of that provision because of government's own intention to implement. We didn't see the need to implement. And so talk about... So you're calling for the scheme arise. to be amended, right? Not the scheme. I'm yeah. talking about Section 31 of, of the... Um, Pensions Act 2008. Eight, Act 766. Yes. Yes. So why didn't you amend it? That is what I want to know now. And I'm sure that is what Ghanaians who want to know. We why didn't did amend it because mm -hmm. there was no need to implement. And when why? you're not implementing a provision of the law, it becomes redundant. It is as good as having the amendment to take it out or to uh, expand the exemption why was there to no include. there no need to implement it? There was no need because we felt at that time that the operation or the operationalization of Cap 30, which was to the benefit of the security services, was still relevant, given the nature of work the personnel of the security agencies uh, perform, or if you like, a discharge. Their work is very different in its character from all other public servants. The conditions under which they work the risk they are exposed to, the dangers involved associated with their work. It's not comparable to, um, say, my work, what I do. And so I do not expect that when I am being migrated from Cap 30, they should also be migrated. That is why we retain them on the Cap 30 scheme. In fact, that is the least government can do, the state can do, to motivate the men and women in uniform to give of their best. Are you not just trying to whip up um, sentiments against government? That is why you're not coming up to um, call for the amendment look, of that. Look, it took a deputy minister of state to appear before the public accounts committee and make this infamous announcement that President Akufado's government has, uh, has taken a decision at the level of cabinet to migrate the security services onto the state pension scheme. Or in other words, get them off the Cap 30 pension scheme. And so I didn't make the announcement. Okay. And he talked about the development of a roadmap. He was accompanied by the chief executive officer of the National Pensions Regula Regulatory uh, uh, Authority. So this is government's position. We're saying that this position, if implemented, this policy decision, will not be in the interest of our security agencies. Remember that as a member of parliament, we exercise oversight over the executive arm of government. So my intervention, mm -hmm. or if you like, the intervention of the minority should be seen in that light. Nobody is whipping up public sentiments against government. Because prior to the announcement, did you hear me make any statements no, in this regard? All. So, so it would be most unfortunate for anybody to um, I think, view what is happening or our intervention through political lenses. So now, um, if governments are refusers or fail to listen to you, what are you calling for and goes ahead to implement the uh, provision, what next? What is the minority be, going to would, do? It would be unfortunate. Okay. And a step in the wrong, a wrong step for government to take. Remember that when you um, resort to conduct, that can, if you like, um, take away 
the motivation that our men in uniform ought to be given, in a way, you are compromising national security. I doubt whether the president who is commander in chief and chairman of the National Security Council would want to take steps that in the uh, final analysis would compromise our national security. He shouldn't be doing that. That is why we are prompting him that the, 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 the step they want to take portends danger for our, our national security with the hope that the president has a listening ear and will listen to wise counsel and rescind the decision to migrate the security agencies onto the SNIT pension scheme. Right, listening here, so you say thank you very much for your time. James Agaga, uh, as MP for Bulsa North and ranking member of the Defense and Interior Committee of Parliament uh, here in the studio. We just finished with him on the amendment or uh, the implementation of the provision of the SNIT scheme. Newsline returns shortly after the break. Please stay.